Hey everyone, Christian Conover here, and I just recently picked up yet another new camera. This time, the Contour HD 1080p. I was recently in Spartanburg, South Carolina doing a special episode of Roundel Table at the BMW Performance Driving Center. I borrowed a Contour HD to get some footage from inside the car as we were on the track, and was so impressed with the quality and consistency of the video that came from that camera that I decided to go ahead and pick one up for myself. I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing video here now, and then shortly after I'll post another video that has some demo footage using this exact camera. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in the box, and then I'll post up some stuff from what the camera can do. So here's the box that the camera comes in. This is the front of it. You'll see here it says Contour HD 1080p wearable camcorder, full HD 1080p. And you can actually see the, the camera itself right there in the box. Um, if we turn it over, it gives us some information about uh, the camera uh, and what comes in this box. So we have the actual Contour HD right here and a micro SD card that comes with it. It comes with a two gig card and I think it's capable of handling up to 16 gig capacity and as you can see right here, up to 16 gigs. So it comes with two gigs and uh, you can expand that out. Uh, it comes with a couple of mounts, a flat surface mount and a goggle mount, um, a rechargeable battery, and that uh, you can swap those out. Uh, and then finally the USB cable. All of that comes with in the box. There are a few different modes of recording that you can do with this camera. Uh, which you can all you can set all of that using a computer by plugging it in with a USB cable. Uh, there are very few options on the body of the camera, and there's no screen because it's designed to be pretty rugged and wearable. So they've put as little as possible in terms of buttons and other things that could be broken on the body of the camera. So you have to plug the camera in, and using the software that comes with it, you can configure the different options for what you want it to record. So it does. Uh, 1080p, which is the 1920 by 1080 30 frame per second resolution, 960p, which is 1280 by 960, 720p, and VGA, which I think is basically the equivalent of 480p. Um, you can change different settings about the bit rate and lighting and stuff, as it says here. Uh, one really nice thing that I was very happy to have when I was in Spartanburg was the wide angle lens that's built in. So there's no attachment or anything for the wide-angle lens. It's always wide-angle, 135-degree viewing angle. Um, it records in H.264, which is a pretty standard format, uh, and AAC audio. Um, so .mov files are what you'd find with Quick, excuse me, uh, Apple QuickTime videos, and the microphone is built in. Uh, when I was using it down in Spartanburg, I was getting excellent audio quality from that. So I'll demonstrate that when I do the demo video shortly after this one with the footage I'm going to get from inside my car. Um, so there you go, information about actual recording. Um, a full, fully charged battery will last you two to three hours, and the memory card, uh, it says 15 to 60 minutes uh, per gigabyte of video. So I guess that means for 1080p video, which is the highest resolution it can do, you'll get 15 minutes of video for every gigabyte of storage you have, all the way down to the, uh, the VGA down here, the 480p. That'll give you um, like 60 minutes per gigabyte, so pretty big range there. If you're limited on space and you can afford to sacrifice some quality, you'll definitely have that option. Um, and as I said, memory capacity up to 16 gigs. Uh, the software works with Mac and Windows. And this is some stuff about the body of the camera itself. So it's a water resistant camera, which is nice, especially if you're going to be doing like um, stuff in the water like they demonstrate on their website surfing or if you're doing skiing anything that could involve it getting wet it's going to be resistant to any damage from that um, it's pretty small as we'll show you in a minute when I actually unbox the, the device itself and pretty lightweight um, and it charges off of a USB port so you just when you're plugging it into the computer to copy data off of it it'll actually charge up that way um, so flipping it over this way just give it some more info about the uh, the camera, just some quick bullet points, and uh, you know, shows it on, the, on a helmet if you're actually going to do that. And then finally, just a blank side of the box. So let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open, see if I can figure out all the places where I need to open it to do that. So looks like it's held closed using like basically sticker dots. Um, this one back and then there's one right here as well. I 
think that's, there we go. So now we've got the box open. Um, and now it looks like we got some more of those things holding the lid on. So let's see if I can peel those off without having to cut them. I'd rather have them all just come cleanly off. There's one. I can hear as I'm moving the box around that um, there's some stuff rattling in there, so that must be the accessories that come with the camera that are stored in the other section of the box aside from where you can actually see the camera. So behind this insert that has the picture of the guy wearing goggles, that must be where all the other accessories are. So should be able to open it up after I get this sticker off. It should just pop right open. So yeah, so there we go. So I'll take the lid off and set that aside. So first off, here's the camera. So as you can see, pretty, pretty nice little size. It fits right in the palm of my hand. Um, pretty lightweight. It's still on the little stand. So, you know, not the most accurate, but uh, let's see how I get this thing out of here. I'm assuming that I have to, let's see. Um, I think if I push on that maybe, you'll see that it's actually sitting on some sort of a groove system. And this is what the people who make the Contra HD call the, um, the T-rail. So you basically can slide it onto bracket, mounting brackets and stuff using this, this rail system that's built right into the body. So it looks like I just, I was able to pop that thing out by pushing it, um, pushing it out the back. So first off, so I'll show you when it was in, it was like that kind of, I don't know how I can get it back in there again. Oh, there we go. So all I had to do was just push this out the back of the little plate, slide that out, and then the camera can only slide one way on the T-rails. So now I can slide it right off the T-rail on that plate, set that plate aside, and here's the camera itself. Um, so that's the actual top of the camera, that's the left side. You see the lens here, that wide angle lens that we were talking about, 135 degree. Um, and then the T-rail system, you can see that they're actually, they're deep grooves in both sides at two different levels so that you can slide something, the camera right onto a, one of the mounting bracket accessories. Um, and then there's a, some sort of label on the bottom, basically I think just a warning label about something. Um, and then so to actually access the buttons and the USB port, etc. in this camera, you slide that up. It's a, actually a whole rubber backing plate on the back of the camera and you pull that away. And now we're looking at the inside of the camera. So we've got a switch here for high and low and we'll find out what that does when we look in the manual. I don't actually know. Uh, looks like the memory card that comes with it is already installed in here. I'm just going to pop that out real quick. If I can get it out. There we go. So you can see micro SD, two gigabyte, pretty straightforward. Pop that back in here. Just slides right in, give it a click, and now it's in. Uh, this big opening here is where you'd stick the battery, uh, which once we pull that out, we'll stick it in there. And then this little switch just flips over to hold the battery in place once you've done that. Um, this red LED lights up when you plug the camera into the computer. It stays lit as long as the camera is charging. So once the camera is fully charged, that light will turn off, letting you know that you're good to go. And then these two white LEDs, this one here and then this one down here, uh, both indicate battery and storage. So this, this one indicates battery and it'll change colors based on the battery state. And the same thing with the memory indicator shows you how much space you have left on the memory card. Um, so as I said, this thing is a big rubber uh, gasket and backing plate. So you just to put it back on. We just put it up here, slide it down and it clicks into place. One of the, one of the cool things about this is that um, it's very easy to use, like, especially if you have gloves or something like this, as I said, if you're skiing or whatnot. So to start recording, you just slide this big toggle forward till it clicks and now you have the bigger to record. Um, and now you're recording and all you do to stop recording is you just slide the toggle back again and then you're done recording. Um, another really excellent thing about this camera, which makes it very obvious is designed specifically for use with, you know, action based things. You might have to put it in, uh, tight spaces and you know might have to be sideways to to fit wherever you need it the the lens is actually rotatable 90 degrees each way so that if you need to position the camera on its side you know you know either way or variation thereof 
you can rotate this lens and that actually rotates the whole camera bot and the whole camera internals within the body. So now if I wanted to mount this camera on, you know, sitting on its left side, the video that I'm capturing is still going to be fully upright, uh, which is very convenient. Um, and same thing, you know, if I want to go the other way, I can do that. So uh, very handy. So let's set that aside and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and look at what, what else is in the box here. We don't want to run too much time. So let's go ahead and open up the rest. Pretty straightforward in here. It looks like we've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I think that's everything, yeah. So here's the, uh, the manual for it. We'll, I'll go through that later and make sure that I can cover everything when I do the demo video later. Um, I think this is the battery. We'll go ahead and open this bad boy up. Yeah, so there's your battery, Contour HD, the little metal contacts, and some information about the battery. It's a uh, 1050 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, and then just some safety information. We'll set that aside. Um, this, I'm assuming, is the flat surface mount. Uh, you just slide the camera in here. Not exactly sure yet how that works. Um, and then here's a T-rail mount, uh, which is, um, I guess, can click into this thing. So basically, this allows you to connect it to, if I understand correctly, either like a helmet or goggles, you know, or um, or a flat surface, you can adhere it to that. Um, so this is a sticky pad that you'd, you'd stick it right onto whatever surface it was. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and try that out later. Um, and then we have the uh, USB cable, which is in this little baggie here. I'm not gonna open it up right now, but you know, it's just a regular old USB cable. I think it uses um, just mini USB uh, version B. And then uh, I think that's everything. So, and then there's a little cardboard ins insert. I'm just gonna stick it back in there. So, uh, so that's everything with this camera as far as what comes in the box. Um, pretty straightforward with what you get. Um, it did mention that it had software. So I'll find out later when I plug it into the computer if maybe that software is stored on the camera and you get it that way or maybe I have to download it from their website or something. I'll find all that out and I'll update that in the next video. So that's the full unboxing of the Contour HD 1080p. I'm gonna run this camera through its paces and get some footage both from within my car, which I'm familiar with from being in Spartanburg, and also get some action shots with the camera on me personally in different environments and hopefully get it a little wet to test out that water resistance and various resolutions, etc. I'll go ahead and post that video up shortly after this one. And in the meantime, go ahead and leave comments and ratings down below if you would. And if there's anything specific you'd like me to test with this camera, please mention it so that I can be sure to include that in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.